critical thinkers, public speakers, and they debate. We have doctors, we have nurses, and midwives. But you're the one who read the article and said that yes. Introducing High Debate TV Championship, where the best schools in Rwanda battle against each other, resolving conflicts without resulting to violence, solving problems creatively using debate. This is High Debate TV Championship. Hello and welcome. This is the IDB TV Championship. You're in for a treat because today's motion is quite an interesting one. I'm David and always your host. Today's motion is This House Regrets Banning Second Hand Clothes in Rwanda. Quite an interesting one. And of course, our panel of judges. Judge Jerry, Judge Doreen is coming back. And of course, uh, Judge Joselito. Judge Jerry, how do you feel on such a wonderful day for debate? Um, thank you very much, David. I'm very excited to be here as part of the panel of judges. And uh, I'm very excited to see what uh, our debaters have in for us and have prepared on this very interesting motion. And I just can't wait to see it unfold. Thank you. He just can't wait to see it end forth. And of course, uh, the teams that are going to be taking on each other. On the proposition is none other than Kagarama Secondary School. The opposition will be New Explorers Girls Academy. <laughs> they are dressed and of course they're ready to say you are wrong. Now the debate will commence. I take it over to Judge Jerry. Um, thank you very much once again. My name is Jerry, as they said, and I'm part of the panel of judges today in this motion. So we are very excited to hear what our debaters have for us today. Uh, without any further ado, I think we can welcome the first speaker of proposition side from Kagarama Secondary School. In a third world country, Rwanda, of 12 million people, 30% of the population live under the poverty line, uh, under uh, extreme poverty, and surviving on at least $1 per day. 45,000 people um, depend on the importation and selling of secondhand clothes, meaning this is their source of income. And out of the 20 million population, 62% can afford secondhand clothes with the money they make. Now, since the policymakers and the side proposition today regret on the benefit of the grassroots citizen, the side proposition indeed um, regrets the banning of secondhand clothes. Resolved, this house regrets the banning of secondhand clothes in the context of Rwanda. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what are the key words in this motion? Number one, we have regret. This is wishing you hadn't done something that was already done in the past. Now, dear judges, um, when do we regret? Side proposition is regretting basic on two things today. Number one, we regret when we did not mean our main objective. And number two, we regret when the harms outweigh the benefits. The, the, another keyword we have is uh, secondhand clothes. These are recycled, previously used clothes. And in the context of this debate, from 2002 to 2008, factories and first tier cities of China and the US have been supplying tons of cheap, quality recycled clothes to Rwanda through, uh, through RSB checking their standards and approving their importation and selling in Rwanda. Now, dear judges, on the basis of regret of side proposition today will be based on the principles and the implications of the banning of secondhand clothes policy. Now, dear ladies and gentlemen, help me analyze what was really the objective of banning secondhand clothes. The objective of banning secondhand clothes was to protect and, uh, and promote local textile industries or made in Rwanda. Now, dear judges and dear audience watching me today, did the banning of secondhand clothes really promote, uh, really, pro uh, really promote local textile industries or it led it to fail? Now, side, um, side proposition today agrees that it was indeed a bad, a bad idea and it led to the failure of these secondhand clothes due to the following reasons. Number one, I'll talk, uh, I'll talk about affordability. 
Um, from the reference of the UR report textile 2021, almost 98% of input and factors of production from Asia, which is literally abroad, like cotton and ink and other things that are needed to produce this, are very expensive and the government has failed to provide subsidies to, to these local textile industries, which has forced these industries to put their prices high. Because as we know, if I'm starting up an industry, my aim is profit maximization, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if, if if, if, uh, if my factors of production are on a high price, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to set a higher price in order for me to incur income in my businesses, which has forced these local textile industries to, um, to raise their prices. Uh, that is where you find like this t-shirt is buying like 50k when I can get the same t-shirt of high quality on like 5k, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it does not make sense in a country of 30% of people that are under, uh, that are under uh, extreme poverty to go and spend a t-shirt on a 30k percent. Now, dear ladies and gentlemen, as I told you on the proposition, we're looking on the benefit of the grassroots citizen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're leaving we're leaving the population of Rwanda with only two choices, ladies and gentlemen. We're leaving them with one choice to spend all their money. I told you they're I told you they're working for at least one dollar per day. Now, to spend all their money on uh, on clothes or or to not buy clothes. Now and. Unless the government is advocating for people to go around naked, we do not want that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, what, uh, what were the, the results of these unaffordable clothes? I'm going to show you and clarify how it actually led to the closure of this. Number one is low demand. If, if, I, started, uh, if I started an industry and my, and my price is high, I do not have demand. And this, this will lead to also price discrimination. This, my time is up. Okay, with all that being said, I give room for cross-examination. I'd like to know, why do we even have to import second-hand clothing when we can produce our own? Our own are expensive and we're in under uh, extreme poverty, so we cannot afford them. Are we going around naked? You're really ignoring the fact that there are also local industries, like tailors can do that at cheap prices, so? Uh, for your own information, even though they ban the second-hand clothes, we still import clothes. The only difference is, not, is, not, is that they're not reused, but they're from abroad with cheaper prices, which means I can get a t-shirt, even though it's not reused, even though it's not second-hand clothes, but it's 1K rather than getting one that is, that is for 50,000 that is made in Rwanda. Does so that make if sense? The, then there are also importation of new clothes, then I don't see the reason to say that there, there is a problem of affordability because the new clothes from abroad are also cheap. Yes, I'm saying the local textile industry set high prices that we don't afford. And those that we import are cheap. Do you get it? Do you get it? You are the one who isn't getting the point. The, the problem is you, you're just saying local industries as it's like you mean the motion industry for example, for ignoring example, the local. For example, what is uh, one t-shirt in motion? It's like 50K. Who has 50K for t-shirts? And right. remember, I'm going to wear like 2K. And I'm getting an income of 1,000, ladies and gentlemen. So you see the problem? The problem is I that... I think it's clear. Can I get another question, please? Any other questions? OK, another question is... OK. Another question goes yes, like... Please? Do you have scarcity of clothes in Rwanda? No. So if we don't... Why should we import second The point clothes? is not scarcity. The point is affordability and prices, ladies and gentlemen. Can we afford them or can we not afford them? Okay. Then I want to tell you that even if we... Okay. Time is up. Uh, I welcome you on our side. So keeping the affirmative side on our track, they asked if the banning of second-hand clothing really helped in growth of local textile industries? The answer to this question is yes, because according to fiber2fashion.com, the textile industries grew by 83% from the year of 2018, which was the year of the ban, to 2020. I guess nobody would regret the success. So um, they're also claiming about affordability, neglecting the fact that there are also local textile industries that provide Clothing's at a really cheap price, like CNDH garments, Isheja fashion clothings, among others. So, uh, there is also the problem that affirmative side brought up saying that raw materials are expensive, but this is a no. According to the newstimes.com, raw materials are not expensive because raw materials entering the country are not charged. They are not charged on the duties, so, which means they are duty-free. And 
So dear judges, it is about being capable and self-reliant, wearing clothing that were owned by somebody else. Is this dignity? Can this make you proud? So the policy to ban second-hand clothes was the best for me, for you, and for the whole country at large. So the foremost reason to the ban was to develop the text, local textile industries, and this was a success because it grew by 83%. And the textile industries provide employment opportunities to people since, as we can see from the, it employs more people. I, I, like for example, the C and H garments employs 800 people in just manufacturing clothing. But uh, even the, the Utexera provided 250 vacancies to people after the ban. So there is no reason to regret because According to the statistics from the Ministry of Trade and Industry, it shows that Rwanda exported 5.9 million before the ban, uh, after the ban, but it used to export 2.5 million to, uh, before the ban. So this is a really great improvement that we got from uneca.org. So there is no reason to regret because it's, it's clearly showing that there was a big growth in the textile, local industries, employment of people, and so there is no reason to regret. So uh, we're also going to talk about how it increased the taxi revenue, the innovation and creativity it brought, and the, yeah. Yes, and so I arrest my case. The Honorable Speaker, what was the main point behind banning second-hand clothes a propose to the benefit of the grassroots citizen engaged? According to the mayor, what please. was the main point of the government behind it banning these second hand clothes, but then in relation to the benefit of the grassroots citizen who is the epicenter of all its policies? So, engaged? if you're saying on the part of the citizen, because wearing hand me downs or second hand clothing threaten the dignity of people, so it's like passing red clothing to, to you. So, this does not help. So, and it also wanted to make people rely on themselves by getting jobs from their local industries Very and nice. developing their markets. Very nice. Question please? Yes. Can you compare manufactured clothes and, um, and handmade clothes? Because Ishema and SNH are, are handmade clothes that they do from uh, Kitenge. You get it? Can you yeah, compare right. The quality. You, you're saying that, that there is a difference between those. But they're all, all hand, uh, run, made in Rwanda clothing that are to be worn. Be it manufactured, knitted, woven, it's all I'm talking for about being the quality. What? The quality. The quality. Of the clothes. Right. It's true that the, the, we can't compare the quality of our clothing to the, to the international clothing from the outside, but this doesn't, to, to, this doesn't lead to the regret because we, the quality being low, it, it, will, it will improve by time as the the country develops the, the yeah, as we, that, the market that, co that, keeps improving. At that point, can you repeat for me what was the source of info where local textile industries increased by 83%? 83%, yeah. What did you just It was fiber2fashion.com. Fiber2fashion.com. Yeah, fiber2fashion.com. Okay. Final information, please. Right. You talked about something of uh, raw materials being free, charged. Now, how are you telling me that we are getting raw materials from the U.S. and they're free? We're getting cotton from, from Asia and they're free. Well, mind you, we are no longer getting raw materials from the US because oh. we were cut. But we're also getting them from other countries and it's free. The Rwanda is willing to make the, the, the loss for a short time, but it will gain tax revenues from there. Thank you very much the first speaker on the opposition side and all the speakers who engaged in the cross-examination. We can now welcome the second speaker on the proposition side. Panel. If any team is losing this debate, then that must be the negative side because they failed to satisfy the main issue in this debate. This is a great debate where we are regretting something that has happened in the past and then we are examining and interrogating its implication and basis of impact and the base of regret as my good first speaker was submitting. Realize that what they suffer is lack of focus and particularity. I cross-examine the honorable speaker that what was the main point behind banning these second-hand clothes? What she told me was 
very funny that we wanted to retain our dignity, which is not the main issue in this debate. They wanted to promote local textile farms, but then funny enough, she comes and engages that there was an 80% increment in these uh, actual growth in these textile farms. But then she gives a bamboozled status quo where she got a source of information that is not credible.com, where we don't have that trust in them. So, Chaya, this is real backed up by the GDP decrease by 2.3% with their failing to realize in this debate. They talk about the low materials that are very cheap, that are cheap commodities, but they are comparing these commodities to the current status quo, where they are comparing a t shirt of 50,000 with a motion t shirt of 100,000, forgetting that people cannot still afford this money. They used to afford these 1,000 t shirts, these 200 t shirts, which they still suffer from observing in this debate. So when we are engaging the affidavit chair, I want to bring it close to your notice that I would like it to be quoted that when in this debate we are interrogating the basis of regret, then let us examine the grassroots benefit of the interests. Then let us examine the grassroots benefit of the citizens who are, who are the epicenter of the government policies in this debate. My good first speaker submitted on the argument of affordability and I would like to extend it. So at the eve of 2018, realize that when the, when the government extended this ban on second-hand clothes, it wanted to promote these local textile farms, but then it, it promised creating more than 2,500 jobs, and then funny enough, she comes and engages to us that they created 250 jobs, which still they fail out to lose on that issue. So, Chair, you will realize that the logic behind this claim is that if 98% of the inputs used in the production uh, of these textile industries, actually it is imported from outside worlds, rather outside countries, you will get to see that the cost of production is very high and the goods like these textile clothes are expensive. Why is this argument so important in this debate? You realize that 52% of the people who are living below the poverty line and they are earning less than $2 a day, who are the majority in the current South School, they can't afford these clothes. That's on the basis of need for the society, these people actually, they are claiming something that is bamboozled in the first narrative. Why is this argument so important in this debate? Now realize a parent of five kids who is earning less than, that, less than $1 a day, and she is expected to buy all of them clothes of these uh, local made textiles, which are even five times expensive more than uh, the second hand clothes. Chair, even on the second level of analysis, I would like to submit on the argument of unemployment. So in the current status quo, where we are harboring more than 12 million people, among which 30% of them are living in extreme poverty, realize that when you promise them to create more than 25,000 jobs at the expense of the 40, 5,000 people who have been employed in this sector, then you're promising them to remain jobless, to remain helpless, to remain hopeless in the long run, and that you are lagging off on the issue of fueling poverty and unemployment in the citizens. Why is this argument so important in this picture? Realize that, you realize that despite of the fact that these people are cannot afford these clothes, they have been also unemployed because these industries, they didn't employ all of the population that was surviving on selling these second-hand clothes. With that, we take this debate. I'd like to know, or you claim that there was a 3.3 GDP reduction, but I want to know how this 2.3 GDP was caused by the ban of second-hand clothing. That's a good, that's a good question. This 3.2 decline in GDP uh, decrease, it was because of so many factors, but also unemployment was, also, was there. Basically, there was also COVID-19, where these people remained unemployed. These industries, these industries had to lay off these workers, and then they remained unemployed in the long run because of banning them from selling these second-hand clothes. I also want to know, you say that 98% of raw materials are exported. It imported. seems like imported. Imported from abroad. Yeah, right. It seems like you don't, ha you don't know that they, the, there, is, there is a duty-free system that the government has imposed to protect... Even if the duty is free, provided these, these uh, raw materials are imported from abroad, still they will remain expensive for these people to afford. Because can you please explain that so that they can understand? When you are importing things, you are not importing them for free. There is that transport. There is actually those duties also in the origin countries. So basically, by saying that you are charging them duty-free in Rwanda, doesn't guarantee any credibility in this house that they will be cheap 
Right. So you mean the second-hand clothings were not, were not transported? They were not charged? Be particular and clear. I mean, you say that the, the raw materials, the, the transportation costs, the, the duty from the home countries. So you mean that these second-hand clothings that were brought to Rwanda were not, were not transported to Rwanda? You mean, how did they reach Rwanda? I mean, so the costs are still there. Even though they were transported from their home countries to Rwanda, they came already when they are cheap. They are not getting cheap when they, they only reach in Rwanda. But then those raw materials are extra expensive from their uh, origin countries. But then when they reach in Rwanda, still they're expensive. They, they won't be cheap just because that we, are, we are not charging I mean, them taxes. Show Case me the rested. significance that they were cheap. Thank you. I will start by refuting what the proposition side has said. They have come here in front telling us that uh, the, the, the people of Rwanda, they are not able to afford these clothes of made in Rwanda. And this is not correct because made in Rwanda products, they are very, be, uh, they can be accessible by any person because even the tailors can make the clothes of made in Rwanda and which means if any of you is able to get an access to any tailor nearby side, it means these clothes, they are very cheap. Maybe the ones that you know they are expensive, but the ones that I know they are cheap to be affordable. Another thing, they came here claiming about that, they said that Rwanda is importing uh, raw materials from USA. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this. Rwanda is no longer importing the products from USA. So how are they coming telling us that this, uh, these imports, they are very expensive? Another thing, I want to tell them that Rwanda is importing the, pro the raw materials from, uh, from the countries like China, India, Qatar, and UAA, which means that uh, USA is not importing the raw materials in Rwanda. Another thing which they said, dear judges, ladies and gentlemen, they say that the decrease was caused by uh, they, they, it was caused by the burning of uh, second-hand clothes. But we have seen they have just talked about that their own. They have said that the the decrease is being caused by COVID-19, not the burning of second-hand clothes. So by starting reflecting on what they have said, they have said that it's causing unemployment. Um, unemployment in the country, but this is how it is, has created more job opportunities to the Rwandans. Because uh, when, you, when, you, when these companies or when these textile industries, they are working, ladies and gentlemen, they can be giving employment opportunities to the people. And also, they are also increasing competition. When those made in Rwanda uh, um, companies, they're operating, they can be leading to the competition among the nationals. And when there is competition, it means the quality of the products of made in Rwanda, they're going to increase. And when the quality increases, it is going to lead to the decrease in prices because the demand is going to be high on the market. Another thing, um, we said that there are also other textile industries like you tell, uh, CH, Sheja Clothing Limited, and also African Design. Without forgetting that the, our sources of information were newtimes.ca.gua. So this is how the president of Rwanda himself said on this date. It was on July 6, 2018. He said that uh, Rwanda will proceed with planned phase out of the importation of second-hand clothes because we are able and we are capable because when we are producing our own clothes, this is going to lead to the creativity and innovation in Rwanda, ladies and gentlemen, which we need in our country because we have seen that these companies of made in Rwanda products, they are leading to the increase in the government revenue. And when the government revenue is increasing, that means the government is also going to invest those revenues in other sectors which is leading to the development of the country which we need so ladies and gentlemen i don't know i don't imagine what would be the main reason of importing this hand second hand clothes since it is also causing to the main problems like also like these skin diseases when you import the raw materials the products which are used 
and wear them. It is going to, this, to cause to the skin diseases, which we don't need. So another thing, we don't have the scarcity of clothes in Rwanda. That's mean, that means that there is no any need of importing the products of, uh, of, uh, of second-hand clothes. And we have seen that 83% of the textile industries grew up, so there is no need of importing these second-hand clothes. Thank you. I arrest my case. Cross-examination. Yeah. I have a quick question uh -huh. uh, about what you're saying about the quality increasing, so the price is going to decrease. Do you know anything about like what causes the price to decrease? Is it the quality of a product? That okay, the price to <coughs> thank you very much. By explaining what I have said, maybe you did not hear me very well or puncture, but I said when there is increase in the competition, when these con uh, these textile industries they are competing, mm -hmm. that means they are going to increase the the quality so that their products can be uh, very seen on the market or very affordable for them. Mm -hmm. And when the, there is competition, it means that the demand, all the supply is going to increase on the market. And when the supply increases, that means that the demand of the people is going to, uh, is going to reduce in their prices. Are you understanding what I'm getting? Okay, yeah, the prices more, more, will reduce more. due to competition. Due to competition. Yes, wow. that's fact. What information? Uh, Okay. You, talked, uh, you talked of employment where 800 people were employed in Utexigua. Are you aware that the owner of Utexigua is from India and the money is actually, people work from Rwanda and the money is, uh, is, uh, is being incurred by India, by the owners of this company, which is people from abroad, which is people from India. Uh, can you answer that? Okay, about what you have said. You have said that uh, the people from this Utexigua. company of Utexigua, but you are forgetting that Utexigua is not uh, providing the job opportunity to that only one person. Remembering that they charge the taxes to that company, right? And also, the people who are working in that company, they are getting job opportunities. What I'm, what I'm arguing is, uh -huh. it's not made in Rwanda. It's made in India, but, but the only difference is that it is in Rwanda. The geographical location is in Rwanda, but it is not made in Rwanda. Actually, that is not right. Because we have seen that the products oh which are made from that company, they are made in Rwanda despite they are importing the raw materials, but they are not importing the, the clothes. Thank you so much. I arrest my case. Thank you very much, the second speaker from the opposition side. We can now receive the third speaker on the proposition side. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's get on the same table. The proposition side does not go against the government's policy of promoting local textile industries, but rather, what is the precaution that the government did, which is burning second-hand clothes? The motion is, this house regrets burning second-hand clothes, not regretting about promotion of local industries. So we are going to show you why we regret burning second-hand clothes because of the effects that it brought to the... To the to run as a society, ladies and gentlemen, not that we uh, were against the government's policy of promotion of local textile industries. Coming back to what the opposition side was claiming, the opposition side says that local textile industries increased by 83%, ladies and gentlemen, just, just, just quote me right. The GDP of Rwanda from 2018 to 2021, in this time of the pandemic, was decreased by 2.3. If you don't know what GDP is, it's domestic production, ladies and gentlemen. Two, the two there was a 12% drop of made in Rwanda, ladies and gentlemen, production, and also there was a cut of raw materials coming from outside so as to reduce the spread, the spread of COVID-19 through importation and exportation of goods. This all, these all factors can lead to, uh, to me saying that this 83% is an invalid statistic, ladies and gentlemen. Based on GDP de decreasing by 2.3%, raw materials being cut down, you cannot prove to me how the, the, the production increased by 83%. Not even the tourism sector increased that much in 20 years, ladies and gentlemen. And also, according to National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda, any statistics to prove the progress of the government are presented by the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda, not a website. And to go on, they talked about the cheapness of local industries. This cheapness is being, cons is being uh, ladies and gentlemen, is being, con co sorry, is being to compared to motions. Why it's not being compared to Chagua? We're talking about second-hand clothes. The cost of production of this, uh, these local industries, sorry, of these motions and this let's say it's all honey stuff, all right, is low, but still the cost of production is high and making the sale price high compared to what second-hand clothes is. The cheapness, yes, is there, but it's being compared to what motions cost, not compared to what Chagua costs. Because you cannot find a shirt that is made in Rwanda anywhere, whether handmade or any kind of made, that costs the same as 
second-hand clothes. As to, uh, talking about how raw materials are being not charged, this is, uh, this is also invalid because we have an excess duty to pay. The opposition side has a role to show us when this excess duty-free policy was set and how much the government is contributing so as to, to, to show that these raw materials are being uh, imported, which are free. Also, they're, they're talking about the quality, is going to, the quality is going to increase because of uh, competition. But ladies and gentlemen, the, quality, the, 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 the prices are going to only decrease if the cost of production is low. And the cost of production is going to be low if these raw materials are being, uh, 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 the government of Rwanda is giving enough subsidies, of which we've shown you which Rwanda is incapable to do that. Also, they're talking about leading to uh, creativity and innovation, and we have no, nothing that is goes against that. Coming back to why we regret, we're regretting because burning second-hand clothes led to different aspects which we have seen as an effect in this status quo. We're talking about affordability, where we say that 30% are below are in extreme poverty, 52% are below the poverty line, 7.6% rise in the unemployment rates. This has all led to people not being able to afford these commodities because of the cost of production, which is high, because the raw materials are imported with a high price, ladies and gentlemen, leading to the cost of production being high. We're talking about unemployment. They said about promotion of 25,000, but we've showed you how 45,000 depended on these so-called markets, which are second and close. And we've showed you how this unemployment rate is higher compared to what the opposition side is bringing on the table. An argument of promotion of local industries the government also did not consider burning second-hand clothes as promotion of local industries because we also have some foreign industries that are such as Adidas and Nike, which also outcompete this so made in Rwanda. So the point of burning second-hand clothes so as to promote local textile industries was not really a valid thing because they did not put into consideration these other foreign industries which also produce goods, ladies and gentlemen. So based on that, we have showed you how the opposition side's main arguments are all failure. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll take the debate on that basis. Thank you. You showed us how the GDP reduced between 2018 and 2020. But I want you to show... 2021, farmers, right. Due to the pandemic, yeah. Yeah, I want yeah. you to show me how the GDP reduced between 2018 and 2019, yes. which was the year for the ban. Yes, the year for the ban. The statistic they're giving us is showing that 83% rise from 2018 to 2021. The ban was 2018 and 2019. This statistic shows a rise from the period of three to four years. Ladies and gentlemen, I've showed you how the pandemic decrease in GDP cannot put into consideration, cannot lead to this rise, this much rise of an 83 point, sorry, an 83 percent of increase in these local industries. So yes, the GDP decreased in the pandemic year, which is 219, led to 219 to 2021. So this statistic cannot be valid. You're not getting what I'm asking. I asked for how, how did it reduce between 2018 to 2019, which was the year for the ban, and the pandemic came in 2020, right? Yes. And I'm responding that this statistic is not a rise from 2018 to 2019, but rather from 2018 to 2021, as your first speaker said, which is why I'm saying that the GDP decrease in all those years, so these statistics cannot be valid, unless you're bringing up another statistic for the rise from 2018 to 2019. So, uh, you get me? Another question goes to you. Uh, uh, what are made in Rwanda products? Products or made in Rwanda. What are made in Rwanda products or clothes? The, Explain. The clothes that yeah, are made. Yeah, give me the definition. Yeah, the clothes that are made in Rwanda. That's it. They are clothes that are made in Rwanda. Exactly. So if they are clothes that are made in Rwanda, that means that any person can be able to produce that commodity. Who, who is it? Not Rwanda? only companies can produce, but yes. all the other, uh, other uh, these tailors can produce those commodities. Yeah. Mm. So how are you bringing this issue of affordability? We have Let me explain you. it. You did not get it. I've told you the cheapness they're talking about is comparing these local uh, textile people to these people of motions. Yes, the cost is high to compare to that of motions, but the cost to second-hand clothes is low. Maybe the, the, the motions, the reason why the price is high is because it has high quality, but also the cost of production remains the same because these, uh, these raw materials are imported from outside. So the cost of production remains high and the price remains high compared to second-hand clothes, not compared to motions. Not right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, the third speaker on the proposition side. That was a very interesting discussion. And thank you for all the speakers that participated in the cross examination. We can now have our third speaker on the opposition side take the stand. Thank you very much. I would first like to refute what the first speaker from the proposition side said. My, my fellow group mates uh, asked her, that, do we have scarcity of clothes in Rwanda? So first she answered no. Then why? Why do we have to, to import those 
second hand clothes in Rwanda so far if we don't have that scarcity of clothes in Rwanda. Another thing is that uh, the, uh, the third speaker from the opposition side came and told us how the GDP of Rwanda decreased from 2018 to 2021. And, and the first speaker from the, the opposition side came and asked her that what percentage or what statistics show the GDP decrease or increase of, uh, between 2K18 to 2K19. We can consider the decrease of the GDP of Rwanda in, in 2019 to 2020 because of the array, the arise of the pandemic. We can't consider that. But we wanted to basically know the rise or the decrease of the GDP in Rwanda in 2018, that was the year of the ban to 2019. They never gave us any typical statistic of that. Another thing I want to, to make clear is that the government of Rwanda is not imposing tariffs or taxes on the raw materials that come in Rwanda. And the reasons why, the reasons as to why the, there are no taxes that are imposed on the raw materials are, is, to invest, is to encourage the investors or other people, in the Rwandans, to give, that, to give them that spirit of producing made in Rwanda cause so far, the, 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 raw materials, the raw materials are to be imposed on taxes, but the final products are, are to pay tax, but the raw materials that enter in the country do not pay tax. Another thing is that uh, uh, the textile industries in Rwanda, they, they are considering motions. I know motions are very expensive, but another thing that these tailors we, uh, we see around us, they, they produce made in Rwanda uh, commodities. You see, when you go and buy a, a cloth, you go, you give them uh, that the money, it's simply 1K to 2K, they give you that well designed cloth, and that's a made in Rwanda. Stop considering motions. I know motions, uh, the price is very ex expensive, and that's not affordable to every Rwandan. But um, there are other tailors, other, other industries that provide a very affordable price to the Rwandans. And another thing I want to make clear is they kept on tackling the affordability, but we know that the average of the Rwandan population is able to afford the clothing made in Rwanda. And the, the first speaker gave out a question that he takes it, what is honored by an Indian? Does that mean that the, the, the commodities to be produced are uh, for Indian country or uh, for the Indians, no? The products are made in Rwanda because so far the, the industry is in Rwanda. And another thing, the owner of an industry doesn't determine the, the, the product to be produced. Another thing is that it takes the drug being in Rwanda, so far it pays a huge amount of tax to the country. And that shouldn't be ignored. And another thing I, should, I want to tackle is the importation. So far, U.S. is not, yeah, I arrest my case. First examination. Your Honorable Speaker, you talked about that the price is very cheap because there are no excise taxes charged on these goods. Do you want to engage this house that the tax is the only determinant of price? No. But uh, other determinants also extra cheap, like you're saying that the taxes are not charged. Uh, other things that could determine the price of a commodity is cost of production. Is it low or it's high? So far, it's not. It's not high. It's not. That's Thank not what you Okay. Uh, Think. You say, you answered that, right? Yeah, you say the average of Rwandans are able to afford these clothes. Cost of I want production. you to prove to us how that, that is valid. Like, how, how, how do you prove that the average is able to afford these clothes? The, possible and the valid way to prove that the average of the Rwandans uh, can afford the made in Rwanda is that made in Rwanda, uh, the tailors, I gave out that, that they're very, they're very cheap. They give out the cheap commodities, like when you want to have that made cloth, the price you give out, it's very affordable, like the average of the Rwandans can afford that. I think that's clear. I'm opposed to the argument.
Thank you to all the speakers who have taken the stand and made their case. We are now to going to the reply speech where every team has to prepare a two minute speech and they have two minutes to prepare that speech. And we will start by the opposition. Thank you. It is causing it is causing a, a high employment opportunity to the Rwandans since there are many co uh, companies which the government is uh, helping to, uh, to make these products of made in Rwanda and those people are getting the employment opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, we say they talked about the importation of raw materials being on, on uh, yeah, they said that the cost of uh, raw materials, they are very cost. But then we told them that, ladies and gentlemen, for the government to protect or to promote these made in Rwanda products, they removed the taxes on the products, on the, on the raw materials to produce these clothes. That means if the tax were removed, then the then it reduced the, the cost of production, which they are talking about. Another thing, they, they, we told them about our sources of information, but then they, they, they kept on claiming that our, our sources of information are not credible. Do they know all the sources of information on the internet? And they also they didn't prove, no. And also they didn't prove us their source of information because they never told us that. Another thing, where the debate is, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about how these, uh, uh, how these uh, industries are promoting increased tax revenue to the government, which they never talked about that point where the debate is the foundation, but they never told us about this banning of secondhand clothes that is going to lead to uh, tax revenue of the government. Thank you so much. I rest my case. <laughs> Now, dear judges and dear opposition side, I want your full attention for me to say this main clash. The main clash of this debate was this. Side proposition today came on the table regretting the policy of banning of second-hand clothes, not regretting the promotion of made in Rwanda, uh, of made in Rwanda industries in Rwanda. They failed to identify that. Now, we are regretting the branding, not the promotion of local industries, which dismisses the argument of dignity in made in Rwanda products. Yes, we want made in Rwanda products to be promoted. We want the innovation and creativity. We're not against that. We are regretting the banning of second hand products, dear judges, which they failed to identify and went on and went on um, and went on re and went on regretting uh, and went on attacking us on the point of dignity in made in Rwanda products when we were on the when we, when we were on the same uh, on the same agreement because we also want the promotion of of, uh, of second hand products, but we are regretting only the policy. Now, we are going to measure this by the effects that were given by the proposition and the side opposition. Now, um, dear judges, the side opposition came here and said, did the ban really help to promote second-hand clothes, or rather they declined, uh, they declined the Made in Rwanda products on the 12% closure of Rwanda, where I, uh, of Made in Rwanda products, which I mentioned in my first speech. Number one, side opposition came out and argued 83% growth due to the ban uh, from 20, 2018 to 20, uh, 2022, we showed how it is invalid uh, by, by showing you a, a GDP decrease of 2.3%, which proves that there were no unemployment because how did the GDP decrease when we had uh, when we had a growth in employment? Uh -huh. the, the point of affordability, dear ladies and gentlemen, as I told you, we are rebating the policy, we're not rebating the made in other products. They came here comparing motions and and, uh, and a tailor made whatever. We are not we are not comparing motions with uh, with a tailor with tailor made uh, clothes. We are comparing motions and chabu are made in under made in under products. And um, another thing was innovation and creativity. I only even tackle that. We're on the same point on uh, on uh, on the promotion of second clothes, but we regret the banning. Now, which leaves uh, the which leaves the side position argument standing because they failed to show us how they were my time is up. They failed to show us how. The, how it is, it is affordable in a state where 30% of people are under the poverty line and, and cannot afford these uh, this made in other products. Unemployment, we showed you about 25 jobs that were promised to get, but, uh, but we, uh, uh, according to, I mean, in, in a. My time is up. So, as this motion is phrased, the burden is on the proposition side to give us the scale at which we measure regret, and then, indeed, is that scale proven according to them? So, the scale that they gave us was the objectives, were the objectives met, first of all, and then do the harms outweigh the benefits, as I quote the first speaker on the proposition side. So, considering that, um, we've seen that one of the objectives was to promote the local industry. So, 
if that objective was made, then we can't regret the decision. And the second, if we compare the harms and the uh, and we see that they outweigh the benefits, including all that, the promotion of the uh, second-hand clothes and uh, second, uh, sorry, the promotion of the made in Rwanda, so the local texture industry. So considering all that, that is what we, we, we consider to make our decision. To be specific to the proposition side, you all did a very great job in terms of making your arguments very clear and backing it up with uh, statistics that are relevant to the point. Uh, the only thing I would, uh, would advise you to do better next time is to try and connect, um, to always try to remember to come back to your scale. So every single argument that you make for your case, try and connect it to the scale and show us that you're proving the scale. So this will reduce the, these parallel arguments and it will reduce the, the ability of the opposition side to take you astray from what you're actually trying to um, trying to advocate for, which is their main purpose, but it's, it, it doesn't work in your favor. And to the opposition side, um, you also did a very good job in terms of standing your ground in what matters in the debate, but also you would, in, if you don't want to, to use the scale of the proposition side that it presented, because most of the time it doesn't work in your favor, that is the whole purpose for them to bring it up, then try to create your own scale to measure the success of how your arguments are hitting. So uh, ne next time, if we're debating on a debate like this that needs a scale, then provide your own so that the judge could also consider it from your side point of view. So thank you very much to the speakers for the very good speech, by the way, and um, keep it up. Thank you. Given the measures that the judge is based on for this episode six of this house regrets banning second-hand clothes in rwanda the debate is in favor of the opposition side new explorers girls academy yes Congratulations to them. They did a wonderful job uh, to defeat uh, the proposition side. And of course, congratulations to you guys. You did a wonderful job as well. Now, of course, we have to show a fair play. So I will please ask the speakers from both sides to stand up, rise up, and uh, give a fist bump to your neighbors or your opponents as a sign of fair play. <laughs> This brings us to the end of today's episode. Stay tuned, more is coming, and as I said, you're always in for a treat. It keeps getting better and better. My name is David, this was the iDebate TV Championship. Until next time, goodbye for now.